Okay. Let's go. All right, let's go. Okay, so assalamu alaikum and a very good evening to everyone who is joining us tonight uh, through Zoom and also through FB Live. So for tonight's Career Talk Master Series, we have electrical engineering with our special guest, IRTS Dr. Iryani Muhammad Rawi from Batch SPM 1997. So currently she is the head of product certification uh, in TNB Labs, Nindirian Berhad, which is a subsidiary of Tanaga National Berhad. So without further ado, I invite Dr. Iryani to the screen. Sorry. Uh, you may start your presentation. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Iman. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you for having me tonight. Uh, thanks to Ansara Muda. Uh, it's been, a, it's been um, a great work that you guys have been doing. So um, uh, I'm going to be sharing uh, my very least experience, not so much. Um, but uh, I really hope that um, it will be uh, beneficial to everyone who's listening wherever you are. You're on Facebook, you're on YouTube or even on, on, on the Zoom. I'll start my screen sharing. Okay. Now, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay. So, uh, my name is Iriani. Uh, I'm currently uh, in Tanaga uh, under the uh, TNB Labs, Sri Amber Hat. And uh, I'll be talking about the uh, electrical engineering, uh, if you ever think of uh, uh, taking this path. And of course, uh, I'm, uh, I'm putting the focus. Uh, these two images, these two objects are my, my actually my definite passion, uh, what I've been love doing, what I've been doing for the past 18 years since I joined Tanaga. And uh, before I continue with the presentation, uh, I, I, I actually uh, gave a title for this uh, one hour talk, uh, which is Realizing Passion and Dream, uh, because why I'm thinking is um, uh, engineering is not just about doing job or doing passion and uh, uh, your dream uh, to actually uh, realize whatever that you are doing so that you'll be enjoying your job or else you, you won't be doing it for a very long time. And of course, uh, I label myself. I, um, uh, I, I, I think that I'm a travel enthusiast and I'm an avid writer and also a distinct beans hunter. And you'll find it uh, along the way uh, when we are um, going through the presentation. And of course, uh, I, I, I will tell you each and every bit of the uh, so-called title because many people have been asking me what are all those titles in print, which is just Iriani. So my name is just Iriani. So uh, uh, I will be sharing with you about all these, uh, the details of uh, everyone is familiar with PhD, but PN, PTEC, SMI, MC, MQOE, IS, Online Lead Auditor. And recently I, I just uh, uh, complied uh, to the ACPE which is ASEAN uh, Chartered Professional Engineer. So I just put it there so that um, uh, to, to make everyone aware that there is such um, a professional uh, 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 possibilities that uh, you can actually go to. Okay, so, okay. I hope everything is good now, Iman, before I continue. Uh, your internet is uh, a bit, uh, up, uh, there's uh, some static. Huh? Are there option lying to into internet? Is it? Yeah, it's a bit static. Um, for now, this is what I have. Oh, okay. So, is it okay now? Okay now. All right. Uh, so, can I start? Uh, <laughs> see my slides, oh, right? You can see my slides. Uh,
Sorry, can you see my slide? Iman? Yep, I can see your slide. Okay. Okay, good. So, how has my journey been for the past uh, 18 years? Like, uh, I started with, uh, uh, I, I would start with Marismat Lahai Marasem. So, I was um, batch 97 uh, recently on the Wall of Fame. Thank you so much for the committee and for the person who nominated me. Uh, and of course, uh, in 1997, I was in Homeroom Berlin. Uh, I was in 402 and 502 days. Uh, it was an economic crisis in 1997. So, so what happened was we don't really have the opportunity to 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 freeze, uh, MRSM uh, uh, Mara to together with UTM, they have um, uh, conducted so-called this uh, program. It's called Forecast UTM Mara. So one whole batch, uh, like 40 of us, we actually, uh, UTM, we were uh, offered to do uh, engineering. So I was there and of course uh, Mara sponsored us and later we got JBA sponsorship and uh, my second year uh, I got an offer from Yasan Tanaga and of, of course I, I, I accepted the Yasan Tanaga and uh, after three years we have completed our uh, degree in the, what I, I, I took uh, Electrical telecommunication. Why? Because at that time it was like the, the era of um, uh, Cellcom, so called. So I, I was intrigued and I wanted to work with Cellcom, so called. So I chose this program. So if you ask me why I choose electrical telecommunication, because it was trending that time. And of course, the handphone at that time was like this big. So we, we, we really have to, uh, you know. At Time, I, I just followed the trend. It's at my game uh, in 2002. Uh, actually, we completed 2001 and the convocation in 2002, early 2002. Uh, I started working with Tanaga um, as an electrical engineer in uh, TNB transmission. Now they call it uh, grid. So uh, what happened was I was doing engineering in uh, high voltage. I wasn't so happy that time because um, I'm supposed to do telecommunication. I'm supposed to do, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, optic, optical fiber. But what happened is that uh, I was asked to do high voltage. So again, I wasn't happy doing what I want in the early years. But somehow, uh, the the the... Interest came very interested on the subjects and the topic and what I was doing. So I did uh, at that time transformers, over lines, and also uh, underground cable. And then uh, later in 2014, I got bored somehow <laughs> because I was doing about same thing since 2002. Uh, this program called Doctor of Engineering uh, or DEng, and I was lucky that I got to skip my masters, so I don't have to do masters. But I have to, I have to actually um, um, commit to se several subjects. Uh, that is the reason also why my DEng, my uh, PhD, I have CGPA. So many people ask me, why do you have CGPA for your PhD? I said, this is the reason why. So I, I got to complete several subjects. And also uh, at this time, I was sponsored by Yasan Kazana. Thank God. Thank you so much. And Yasan uh, has been very, very helpful. Uh, 2000, um, no, at the end of 2016, I was seconded or I was uh, assigned for attachment in the um, University of Bologna in Italy uh, to, did, uh, to do my, I'm um, sorry, to do my research on lightning uh, with the professors. Um, there are few professors who actually uh, helped me with the, um, the research when I was attached, attached in Unibo. So um, after completing my PhD in 2017, uh, about the same time I was uh, um, seconded or transferred to uh, TNB Labs, uh, which was on 
promotion Vanguard. So intensification under quality assurance in TNB Labs. So that was about my journey uh, in, uh, in terms of career. Lah. Okay. So, but where have my career and passion brought me? So, I, uh, since I started my journey in 2003 in Tanaga, I, because maybe because I didn't have the chance to, to study abroad, but when I started working in Tanaga, I've been given a bunch of opportunities to actually uh, travel the world because my job requires me to go to, uh, you know, like uh, test. In, uh, department sometimes in Europe, sometimes in you already been to more than thirty, uh, I think thirty three, thirty four countries lah, more than hundred cities the whole while. So I consider myself very lucky to be given this opportunity, and not just because of work. I did that also based on my passion. So uh, I I actually try to you know uh, travel whenever I have. To time but this COVID thing is actually somehow killing me lah because I cannot go anywhere again but it's fine it's fine so right here when I was uh, this was my very first trip in 2003 where I was sent to uh, Italy and France to to attend a test type test uh, program and um, this was the starting when I got bitten by the travel bug so when I got bitten by the travel bug, I feel like I want to travel all the time. So this was my very first um, uh, so-called flight or travel when I was in France. So, all right. Is everything clear right now? Uh, not so much. Can we try like switching off your camera? Switching off my camera. Yeah. Hold on, yeah. Uh, stop a bit. Okay, okay, yeah, this is okay. Okay, uh, let's try for now. Okay, so right, uh, so before we get electrified, before we talk about the electrical engineering, so let we, I know it's weekend night, I know it's Sunday night, uh, so I wish to bring you together with me to join me with the this was the very last uh, trip be right before COVID came in so this is uh, I want to share with you uh, my, my trip uh, when I was in um, uh, doctor we've lost you <laughs> You've tried to WhatsApp her, Simon? Uh, yeah, I've, tried, uh, I've already WhatsApped her. Uh, so we ask for everyone uh, to be patient for a while uh, because our guest is experiencing some connection problems. Okay, she's back. All right. Uh, your mic's off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Glad to have you back. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's continue. Not much time. <laughs> All right. So you can see my screen now. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Hello. Is it okay? Uh, we haven't seen the screen yet. We haven't seen the screen. Okay, now we can see it. Okay. 
So uh, this was the very last trip before COVID came in. So I, I want to share with you because um, what happened was during this trip, um, uh, it opens up my eyes to uh, to see like um, how the world can be, you know, like, um, uh, like this trip, uh, for example, we experienced all the way from minus 10 degree to 40 degrees C. And this was one of the uh, location where we, uh, it's called Zozilla Pass. It's the most dangerous path on earth. And um, uh, we, we have to go through it, no choice. So also this one is the coldest inhabited place in the world. It was minus six. T six zero, so it was really really super cold, and we still have to go uh, through it. And of course, we fell off from our bike multiple times, and uh, we have to got back up. And we 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 experienced this um, military uh, for hours. We have to wait for them to pass because we can never go against the military. And uh, if you watch this Gunjan Saksena on uh, Netflix, then you will see the very exact location of this um uh, this location. So again, this one it was minus ten. We were freezing, and finally, what we got is that this amazing, amazing location that of course is the bluest lake and it's salty lake is uh, more than 4,000 meters above sea level and of course um, at the end of the day we managed to to reach the highest uh, motorable road in the world is called uh, Kardungla and um, um, after the minus 10 we suddenly were in the desert and it was 40 degrees C it's, it's really really crazy so I'm sharing with you this amazingness of the um, and of course uh, along the way we inspired me along the way so i'm not just a board electrical engineer i love to find um a, a, a lady. So, are you electrified tonight? <laughs> uh, uh, Doctor Irani, uh, okay. uh, is it is it possible you if might? we can try again to switch off the camera just to like see if the connection is everything okay? Uh, just now it was a lot of static, lah. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> All right, wait here. Okay, uh, Dr. Iriani, hi. Uh, memang tak ada option lain eh for internet. Uh, macam nak minta kurangkan the usage on the internet ke apa ke. I'm already on 5G now actually. I see. So... Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. I can hear you. Can, can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Okay. So can I continue? So I, I, I didn't turn on my video right now and I'm going to screen share again. Okay. Okay. All right. Sure. Right now. Okay. It's not even raining outside. So uh, where were we? Um, I was asking whether um, are you guys ready for the sharing? So now, um, who am I? 
Okay, uh, my name is Irani again. Uh, if you already followed me on the uh, LinkedIn, I was I'm known by the name uh, Gadis Latri. Why? Because um, a couple of uh, months or maybe a few years back, uh, Tanaga shared these photos on the LinkedIn, and uh, many people were asking like can a lady do that can a woman climb such high towers so um uh it it, it became like um many people contacted me and asked whether it's possible so i say yeah i've been doing it for many years now and uh, of course god is a girl electric is electricity and also at that time i was um I was uh, writing my blog. I started to write my uh, Guardian's Electric blog uh, dot WordPress and also, also sharing on the LinkedIn. So uh, this is who I am. And of course, now if you are electrified, let me share with you what are the uh, subjects or the essential engineering subjects uh, that uh, you might you have to um you know like you, you have to really be familiar with uh those are like engineering mathematics uh circuit theory and a lot electronics dsp and of course most importantly is the uh, power systems and um, motor and drive so these are the subjects that will be uh, very closely related to electrical engineering and of course, um, if you are familiar with the conventional uh, electrical uh, system, um, we started with the generation. Okay, so the power station where uh, uh, the, the power is generated, it can be of coal, geothermal, or even nuclear. So these are where the power is being generated. And of course, the voltage is uh, pretty low, but not so low. But we need to transfer it uh, to all the sources that's going to need the power via transmission line. So this is where I am. I was doing my transmission line uh, back in the day. So uh, the transmission line will be carrying very high voltage or ultra high voltage. And then uh, the transmission line will be then being stepped down um, uh, before it's being transmitted via the distribution line. So the distribution line will be uh, distributing the electricity to consumers and industrial, which is maybe around 11,000 volts. And of also finally to the residential, including our houses. So of course we have single, uh, upper single uh, circuit of uh, uh, three phase, single phase and also three phase. So this, is the conventional system and of course now we have the smart grid so what does the smart grid do the, there is one energy management system or the ems who which actually controls everything all the way from the generation like the solar power plant the energy storage system even the wind power plant the hydro everything will go to the ems and then it also um, controls the uh, conventional like the geothermal the nuclear the thermal power plant and even the the charging station the ev and uh, the um, houses offices and cities so everything is integrated so this is what we called uh, the smart grid all right so now okay so this is what we offer at least in tmbr and tmb research uh, tmb labs so these are all the possible uh, uh, careers or the, the the job that people been doing in uh, in our division or our company so there are generation uh, department and we have also substation the uh, uh, climate change utility automation you have civil and just civil or of course not necessarily involving electrical engineers but when it goes to material testing renewable energy the solar panel and also smart grid and of course uh, this is where i am where you can see the uh, uh, quality assurance right here. And this is my favorite uh, high voltage testing services and lightning and earthing. 
power system department also of pins of plant inspection then we have also uh, the uh, forensic engineering group this all requires electrical engineer but of course expert all diagnostic services where we receive um uh what do you say the um the, the oil sample from the transformers mostly are chemical engineers so the chemists will be here mostly but the rest majority are electrical engineers okay so now let's go to the advanced uh, career path uh what happened after graduation so are you going to choose the right path all right so uh, these are among those uh, career advancement options which are very diversified you can become academician you can be the safety officer you can become the quality of a uh, quality uh, inspector like what I did from 2017 onwards. And then you can also do the auditing and data analytics if you are if you love numbers. And of course, technical, you can have your IR title, the TS, the JEK, PMP, and also chartered engineers, which is CNG. So these are all the career advancement option. And how are you going to uh, obtain them? What uh, the professional recognition and then uh, for example the TS title or the the one that I was I'm carrying the TS how I got that is from MBOT or Malaysian Board of Technologies so after you got your degree in electrical engineering for example you got your bachelor you gonna register for graduate technologies and after several years of experience you can apply for professional technologies or p tech so p tech can can give you the title of ts and of course you can brag with your uh, stamp right there which i never use anyway so this is one of it the the type, uh, ts and this is uh, i think quite famous uh it's the ir title so the ir title is uh, from lembaga jurutera malaysia or bem board of engineers malaysia of course after you got your electrical engineering uh you will be asked it's mandatory to register as the uh, graduate engineer and then after minimum three years uh, becoming an, a, a graduate engineer, you might want to apply for professional interview. It's not compulsory, but it's up to you if you want to, to, to have an extra mileage in your career. So you can also become a member of uh, IEM. Uh, uh, for example, I was carrying the SM title, the senior member, because uh, at first you will get your MIEM after getting the IR. So you got your IR, uh, you will be entitled for MIEM. Then after several years, you got your SIEM. And I'm currently applying for fellowship, which is FIEM. All right. So after that, uh, of course, when you get your IR title, you can again brag with your stamp right here. There are two level of uh, stamp. Uh, last time, there's only one, the round uh, title, but now they did two, the hexagon. The hexagon is the first stage. So if you are qualified for another level of a professional uh, engineer, you can get the kata, the circle stamp ni lah yang professional engineer. They call it PEPC. So it's the higher level of um, uh, PE lah. All right. Now, IEM, Institute of Engineers Malaysia. Again, there are several levels. Like I said, when you got your degree, you can register for graduate. And later you can, after you got your IR, you will be entitled for MIEM after the professional interview and assessment. Then after several years, you can upgrade to senior member. And finally, you can become the fellow. Lah. So this is the IEM. Now, okay, this one, if you are serious in uh, high voltage, um, oh, sorry. Okay, uh, Suruhanjaya Tenaga or Energy Commission EC under the ECOS or Energy Commission Online System. Uh, you can actually, after you got your IR, after you got your IR, you can actually apply for JEK, Jurutera Electric Competent. Uh, why you want to apply? Satu, because it's quite rare to have this JEK. And of course, the, the, the perks or the benefit of how much people pay you is going to be 
a bump. I'm gonna say it's really it's really nice lah the perk, but the of course the the responsibility is also very high because if you blow something, then you're gonna have problem with it lah, kan? So of course high risk high reward. Uh, okay. So again, uh, from generation and transmission, and it goes down to the domestic or distribution. So you can actually go step by step from JEK. You can upgrade to JPE and also resident engineer. All right. Now, what else? Let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, go back down the memory lane. Now, uh, I'm sharing with you some of those photos that I found. I, I love doing this presentation because I almost forgot uh, my journey actually when I started. I was actually uh, trans, uh, I, I was assigned in TNB Hydro all the way in Pergau. So I was there for a couple of months and it kills me because I took, it was in the deep jungle and uh, tiger and elephant was my best friend. I even had this situation where uh, elephant was like, um, uh, it, 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 it walks in front of my face. And of course, at one night I was too scared to go back to the, the quarters. It was 30 kilometers away. So what I did is that I I, I slept in my car and the next day when I, I when I woke up, there are multiple tiger footsteps outside my car. Yeah, so it is really, really scary. I, I didn't and I was sleeping with my window open. So I'm glad that I'm still alive right now. So this is what happened when I was in hydro. And what I did was I was assigned to actually install this power transformer. But I'm so glad that the, the station is still running up to now. And of course, these uh, photos, uh, my first uh, type test experience in 2003 when I was in France and Italy. And these two gentlemen right here, Desanti and also um, I can't remember the other guy. We are still in contact somehow on LinkedIn. And this was in uh, uh, Poklang, uh, Poklang station. So you see the, the computer are so up to uh, dinosaur. Lah. And uh, I was climbing uh, this pylon. It's my hobby. I really love to do it since, uh, I mean, like when I was younger. And of course, this one, I was in MTM. I was in the quality department. And of course, testing, and these are all the uh, the the what do you say the uh, possible uh, uh, job that you can be doing if you are an electrical engineer. You can become the substation protection or telecontrol SCADA. You can become the testing engineer, maintenance transformer. You can even take care of the rentis or the way leaf. Like uh, when there are trees uh, underneath your lines, then you have to cut it off. So this is also electrical engineer job. And of course, quality and some are in construction and project underground cable. You can become control engineer if you are in a control room. And of course, you can take care of the meter, like under metering. And of course, if you don't like all those electrical things, just you can become safety uh, OSH inspector, which is also very interesting. Like for me, I was always an overhead lines engineer. Okay, nice. Uh, right, so these are some of uh, my site experiences. Uh, on the left side is uh, my baby project 500 kV gas insulated line, the GIL. And this was when I was in the um, Budapest or Hungary uh, with the linesmen where they were uh, very surprised that I'm the lady who's in charge of the uh, installation and testing because they thought that I just uh, accompanying of one of the engineer. So I said, no, I'm the engineer. And they said that, hey, it's not possible. A lady can't be electrical engineer. I said, okay, fine. So they asked to take some photos with me because they said it's quite rare. I said, okay, fine, fine, let's do it. So I told them in Malaysia, it's very common to have lady engineer, right? So yeah, this was my visit in, uh, I was in Jakarta and uh, Bangkok to, to, to uh, it was a very interesting visit before we started off with this baby project of uh, GIL, Gas Insulated Land. Also these two project was my, my, my baby as well. Uh, we did these uh, floating towers all the way in Pengarang. 
uh, we what we did was we designed the uh, uh, high capacity conductor. Uh, it it have to carry current high enough, but it have to be light enough because when you are in the middle of the sea, the the wind can be so strong that. Uh, uh, you can't afford to have, um, uh, but the, the swing is going to be really bad. So we don't want to have all those uh, problems. And this one right here, um, I was visiting Sepang Solar. It's also a very, very interesting project. Okay, next is the, um, uh, right, what's my next slide? Hello, next, okay. So this is uh, my audit experience. Uh, when I joined uh, TNB Labs in 2017, I became an auditor, lead auditor. So I was sent to uh, various companies all over the world, in the States, in Europe, in Shanghai. This was in Shanghai and France, Europe, everywhere. Whenever they need an inspector, they, they send us. This one is just in Moa. I love it because I've never seen up close uh, apa tu, lampu jalan. We only see it from the highway, right? So this one we get to to, to actually uh, play with it. Like, wow, it's so big. Like, we see from the highway, it's not that big, you know? So, um... This is when I was inspecting um, the, uh, the, the connectors, which I've never seen before up close as well. But when you become an auditor, you have to know everything. You have to read the spec and you have to, uh, to, to be aware of whatever the product has to offer you. So now I think, uh, are we on time? I think we are on time. Yes. Yes, you have done wonderful by uh, <laughs> meeting the time. <laughs> yes. uh, thank you so much. Yes. Okay, um, so like I realized you were able to cut a lot of things and while we wait for any questions coming from the audience, uh, so anyone who would like to ask questions through the chat box, please do so. And for those who are watching through FB Live, uh, just give us a, uh, questions on the comment section. All right, so um, I'll start off with my question. Uh, I think uh, a lot of things have been missed compared to the sync upright. And I think there were a lot of interesting things. So uh, may I ask you again? <laughs> yeah, sure. um, because uh, just now we talked about how uh, electrical engineering degree mm -hmm. has a lot of stuff in other engineering. So could you maybe like share with us what other sub engineering? Okay, you mean like under uh, electrical engineering, uh, what else can it be besides the power uh, power electrical, right? Yes. yes. Okay, so besides uh, electrical power, like I said, my degree was on the uh, telecommunication where I studied telco. And of course, other than that, there are uh, sub-engineering group like um, uh, electrical mechatronics, there are electrical electronics, and there's also electrical, oh, there are, there, there are a few. You can actually check from the website, say like, um, you see like uh, UTM, for example, I, I was from there. My colleague, uh, they did uh, electrical, electronic, and also they did, um, uh, what else? Uh? Mm, that, that's quite a few, lah, uh, Iman, there's quite a few. Yeah. So you could say that uh, taking a degree in electrical engineering can be quite wholesome Which of, because like from what I saw in your slides, yes. uh, your degree up to your professional mm -hmm. qualifications have brought you to so many places. Uh, yes, okay. yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> okay, so we have a question from Shafi. Uh, can electrical engineers work mm. at Tesla? Oh my God. <laughs> I know that question. Of course. Uh, okay. Of course, of course. Uh, I know this question. It comes from Shafi. He, he's a big fan of Tesla. So am I. So uh, of course, um, uh, Tesla is, uh, like I said, uh, one of my slides, I, sh I, I showed one of my slides where, uh, uh, did you remember when I showed the, um, the smart grid, right? So in the in the yep. smart grid, 
let, let me find my uh, slide again. So in the smart grid, actually, what we have is the, um, uh, what do you say, uh, the, uh, the power bank or say this one, let me show you. Okay, you see this uh, energy management system or the EMS system. So um, when you uh, Dr. What? Okay, okay. Now the slides we cannot see the slides. Now is okay. Uh, now. Nampa. Now yeah, nampa. Okay. Now you see what Tesla what. Okay, Tesla's one of their business instead of just uh, building cars, electrical car, which is also one of our uh, interesting uh, areas. Uh, as electrical engineer, you can build electrical car, but for us as a utility, it's more on the energy storage. You can see here the energy storage system. Tesla has a very, very a big project we, uh, in, in Australia. They have like this uh, massive energy storage uh, field which uh, where they, they actually produce um, um, so-called power bank, something like that. So they, they built this massive energy storage system and this is where we are supposed to be if we want, if we are very interested in the uh, uh, energy storing system. So this is uh, one of those, um, uh, what do you say, uh, exciting areas that we can be involved with. And of course, yeah, it is, it's very much possible, of course, yeah. Any more questions? <laughs> uh, okay, so a question from me. Uh, so the smart grid is very forward looking, uh, so in Malaysia, yeah, yeah. Uh, which states have started? Or is it like already a lot of states throughout Malaysia? Again, what? Again? Uh, which states which? in Malaysia uh -huh. have started uh, applying smart grid in their town planning or... Oh, oh I see. Uh, we started off with uh, one of our incentive is to, to uh, provide smart meters. Where in Malacca, we have installed, I think, 1 million meters, something like that. So we started off in Malacca. So Malacca have smart meters. Those are one of the smart grid project that we have in Tanaga so far. Yeah. Mm. I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So we have a question from Hadi Shaiful. Uh, doctor, what are some examples of fully commercialized electric vehicles? Are there any commercialized vehicles that fully utilize the use of electrical and electromagnets? Wow, why is everyone asking about electric vehicle? I'm from the utility, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me read back the question. Uh, electrical, da, 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 da. Hey, where, where did you get the, the questions? Uh, from Hadish Chaifu, from oh, the okay. chat. What are some examples of fully commercial electrical vehicles? And uh, fully commercial electrical vehicles, you mean like the Tesla cars, is it? Are this what you mean? Yeah, one of those are the Tesla cars. We have so many models, like the S model and everything. Those are all the fully commercialized electric vehicles. And uh, the use of electrical and electromagnets is uh, they're, they're using fully charged uh, battery cars and they don't use um, uh, petrol or anything like that. So these are one of those examples uh, of the um, electric vehicles that I can recall. Yeah, I think, is that, does that answer your question? I hope so. I hope uh, so. Hadi, okay, yes, he says, thank you, yes. All right, so we have a question as well from FB, from Ji Liang Liu. Uh, for an MBOT registered graduate technologist yeah. and join TNB, what grade will he be? What grade? Yes, what for, grade? For MBOT, for what grade? Yeah. What do you mean the grade? For, for MBOT, what you need is at least a bachelor degree. Uh, so once you have your uh, whatever degree um, in engineering, for example, you can straight away apply for the graduate technologies or the, uh, uh, the GT. 
and after certain years of experience then only you can apply for pt lah for the uh, professional technologies where you can carry your title ts before that if you are carrying only the graduate technologies uh, you can't uh, use uh, your your title yet so this is how how uh, mbot um apa structured the uh, program lah for the uh, professional technologies you're going to need certain years of experience in the field something like that yeah Okay, so I hope that answers your question, uh, Jiliang Liu. Okay, so, um, but on that topic, right? Mm. So there's so many qualifications. Um, so practically these qualifications, are they all interlinked uh, or how? Okay, uh, it's not interlinked. For example, MBOT, if you have, uh, if you are certified for TS, it's okay if you don't want to proceed with the IR or the professional engineer because these are different, uh, um, um, what do you say, BEM and MBOT are different entity. So a BEM, if you want to obtain these two, the professional engineer, but again, you need to have your degree to apply for the GE, graduate engineer, and you're going to go through the professional interviews and exam. And of course, uh, you need, uh, it's not compulsory, but you, you can be the member of IEM or Institute of Engineers Malaysia. And of course, from there, uh, after certain uh, assessment and uh, they're going to need some drawings and all those proof that you have done sufficient engineering uh, project in your career, then only you will be qualified for the PE. But if you go to the uh, ST or the ECOS, you need to have the IR first. So if you don't have the IR, you can't apply for the JEK because the JEK is compulsory to have the IR. So the steps is like you got your degree, you apply for the G, uh, uh, graduate engineer or the GE. Then after several years, you will get your IR or the professional engineer. Then only you can apply for the JEK. And then after JEK, JEK you can upgrade to JPE. Then of course, if you want to become the resident engineer also. So these uh, the red marks are the um, what do you say uh, degree holders. For the orange mark, it's not necessary to have a degree holder. You can become the penjantung cable or the penjaga jentera. But normally, uh, the degree holder they will straight away aim for the JEK or JPE lah, something like that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, are you planning on aiming for JEK? I already got it. Oh, oh you already got it. Oh, can yeah, you share it was, with us? It was 2006. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I didn't hear. I'm so sorry. Uh, but I don't use it like, because, uh, you know, I, I was rarely at, uh, you know, this is more on the switching guy, like, people who do who did switching. So I attended the course for six months. It was a six-month course um, by uh, ILSAS. And we have to attend all the... Um, apa tu the uh, what do you say the the uh, apa ya, uh, practical experience so from there only you will be uh, allowed to attend for the interview and everything lah so um, for me is is quite a hard process but of course the 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 outcome or the purpose is is really high lah. Um, whether or not are you a switching engineer or something like that. So for me, um, in 2006, I was purely doing my electrical uh, or what do you say, lightning studies. And I was doing my simulation works and of course, cl busy climbing the towers like this one. I was busy climbing the uh, transmission poles. So I didn't really have time, you know, to, to, to do all the switching work. So it's not really my area lah for the JEK. My other colleagues, yes, they're, they're really um, enjoying uh, with the JEK and uh, JBE lah. So for me, not really, no. <laughs> I see. It depends lah. It depends if, if you really want uh, to go to which, because uh, like I said, there are so many opportunities of uh, which uh, titles or which area that you want to have so for me i choose my path and uh, this is what i came up with yeah hmm. <laughs> wonderful wonderful and look at where you're at 
such an amazing <laughs> person, really, honestly. I was just having fun, Iman. I was just having fun. <laughs> I love my job. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's what we love to hear. Okay, so from Iza Shahmina, uh, doctor, mm. are electrical power engineer and electrical engineer the same? And perhaps could you share with us what are the sections that electrical power engineer will be placed at, especially at TNB? Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay, electrical power and electrical engineer are the same. Uh, I would say is a subset. Uh, when you are an electrical engineer, these are all the list of your possible, uh, what do you say, uh, what you can do uh, when you are in service. But if you are an electrical power, you can be doing, um, you know, like a high voltage, for example. But... Um, um, for me, that's not much different and um, I would rather say I'm an electrical engineer. So I don't limit myself as an electrical power engineer because um, as a theoretical ways, it's still electrical engineering anyway. So for me, I don't really um, differentiate these two. So I, I just call myself um, an electrical engineer, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Iza Shamina, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Okay, now on to the second part of her question. Uh, could you share with us what are the sections that electrical power engineer will be placed mm. at in TNB? Yeah, these are one of those uh, examples. If you're in electrical power, you might be sent for uh, this high voltage equipment like um, transformers, for example. But protection and telecontrol are more on those electronics or the uh, SCADA and automation. These are not really high voltage. So if you are electrical power, maybe you'll be sent to substation on overhead line. But I'm gonna tell you that it's not necessarily that you will be sent to where you wanna go. For example, my case, my degree was on electrical telecommunication, but I was never sent in the ICT department except for this couple months of, um, what do you say, the um, uh, apa tu? practical, practical, apa? practical month, tu kan? Yang internship, yeah. So oh, okay. The, okay. Yeah, those are the only months that I was uh, sent to ICT department. The rest, I was all the way in transmission, high voltage, and also uh, doing uh, high voltage and uh, power, electrical power system. So don't be too rigid because uh, I have one of my friends who was doing uh, warehouse keeper. So he was sent to the warehouse and um, he was so pissed off because at that point, Dala, the warehouse in um, somewhere, I can't remember where, but he was, he told me that he was taking care of the number of cotton buds. <laughs> so how oh. many cotton buds? <laughs> because he was uh, looking after the power station, the generation. And... Um, and then he, he got so pissed off and finally he resigned. Lah. So these are some of the examples where you can't really choose where you want to work, especially when you join uh, big companies like GLC. So for me, I didn't complain. Uh, I was quite uh, frustrated at first because uh, I wanted to be in the telco department. But I wasn't. Uh, somehow, rather, uh, it helps me to grow my, um, what do you say, interest. And finally, I fell in love with the uh, power system. And uh, yeah, I started my career from there. And of course, when I did my PhD in 2014, also straight away, I didn't think much. I just choose uh, electrical power because I already... Um, um, what do you say? I develop my passion and uh, um, apa tu? Uh, minat lah in this uh, electrical power. So yeah, don't don't, don't be too ni lah. Uh, kata uh, too serious about hey, I'm an electrical graduate, so send me as electrical engineer because you might end up as a safety inspector or OSH inspector. It happens a lot of time. So yeah, that's that's my um. 
uh, advice lah. <laughs> Thank you. That's very open-minded. <laughs> yeah, just be uh, open-minded. Yeah. Uh, oh, but on that point, um, like, how, like, from SPM, did you already have the passion, uh, like, tak I mean, like, oh. at what point, how did you grow your passion? Okay. Uh, you know, uh, you might know this because I talked to her earlier. <laughs> My original intention is I want to be interior designer. <laughs> I want to become a decor. So what happened was in 97, we were forced to attend this course as um, under the forecast City MRA. So we were asked to select only engineering. So it's either electrical or chemical or mechanical. And uh, these are the only choices that we have. So uh, at that time, Cellcom was so famous. I say, all right, fine, let's do electrical telecommunication. That's it. So um, after graduating, I thought that I'll be sent to electric uh, ICT department in Tanaga. No, I didn't. And they sent me to the uh, transmission uh, division. And then when I started doing all these jobs, like all these works, and then I, I've been traveling a lot, like more than 100 cities, it, it, it hits me in, straight in my heart. I feel like, here, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So this is what I love doing. And then um, it started from there. I, I really love what I'm doing. So uh, when I was asked to, to, to uh, I mean, like, um, move to other department, I said, no, thank you. I'm very comfortable in this department and this division. So I stayed there for at least 16 years in the same department doing the same thing. Uh, but I really love it. I really love my job. I remember that very much last time. So in 2017, when I went to TMB Labs, it was due to promotion. So I was forced to, you know, like uh, from electrical engineer and I became a, an audit inspector. But still as an audit inspector, I was doing somehow electrical work anyway. So uh, as an electrical engineer, I inspect uh, uh, beacon, lampu jalan and also underground conductors, which also need to have electrical knowledge as well. So it doesn't go away from your niche lah, your, your area, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, okay. We have a new question uh, from Iza Shahmina. Uh, she says, thank you, doctor. Uh, I would like to add one last question. Uh, you look amazing climbing up those incredibly high towers so nowadays. Are there any limitations for a female engineer to climb up the tower just like how you did back then? Uh, I have been hearing stories that sometimes they prefer male engineers to do those things. Is it true? <laughs> it's not true at all. Oh my God. Okay. I, I think maybe she missed one of my first slides. Uh, this one. So <laughs> this is what I've been doing uh, from the very first day I joined uh, Tanaga. I climb a lot and some people do call me the spider girl whatsoever. So it's not impossible at all. I, I climb all the way up to 55 meters up here and even, you know, 60 meters also. And um, as long as you have the safety rope right here, you'll be safe up there and don't, don't worry about, you know, there's always risk in doing so many things, but being a girl or a lady, it doesn't stop you from doing all these things. So Very please... Good. Yeah, so please, you know, okay, I have one interesting story. Uh, we, ha we have time, like, two minutes. Yeah, okay. yeah, we have time. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, I think way back in 2005 or six, something like that, I was doing this project. Uh, and then, um, I'm so used to climbing towers. I didn't even look down. I keep climbing, you know, like, keep, keep climbing. And then, uh, I remember one of the suppliers, he said he want to climb. He said it looks fun because we climb through the, the step boats right here, but we don't come down through the step boats. You know, what we did is we swing ourselves down because there's a rope here and we actually just use the stopper and we just slide down here. It is a free fall, something like that. It's very, very interesting. So this guy, he said, I wanted to, to, to join you. I want to climb. So, um, okay, fine. So I was climbing. I, I was climbing and then uh, suddenly I didn't hear his voice. 
I say, hey, where's this guy? Ah? So I, I just climbed all the way up to here. We call it Bangkok Raja. So up to the Bangkok Raja, I, could, I couldn't hear him talking because he was talking all the way, like whatever. You know what happened? He was right here at the safety net right here somehow. He was crying. <laughs> oh. oh my. <laughs> I was like, what happened to you? And he was crying like so bad. He was so scared to continue and he's also too scared to go down and what mm. happened was i climbed down and the other guy came from bawah ini and uh, we somehow rescued him la. so you know it's not about gender it's it's the passion of whatever you want to do so uh yeah it doesn't matter I, i'm a very small girl you know like I, i'm 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 small, so it doesn't stop me from uh, doing all these things. You don't have to be like super tall whatsoever, no. So as long as you look what you're doing, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. That was very motivating indeed. Uh, I hope that helps answer Isa's question. Uh, in actually, not just maybe Isa, but I think a lot of people have the same idea that uh, society has this sentiment that you know girls are not very suitable to enter engineering so thank you very much for sharing your story with us sure all right so another question uh from shafiq why did you pursue all this title and qualification uh is it for self-satisfaction or career requirement uh did you use all the expertise qualification in your career such as jek yeah, uh, I pursue because, of course, it's, it's not requirement. It's not a compulsory requirement back then. Now, I heard that Tenaga uh, requires uh, certain uh, titles to get your promotion. But in my time, last time, there's no. So, what I did is for my own self-satisfaction, even including the PhD, what I did is purely for my own satisfaction. I want to study more because I was doing lightning for many years at that time and I feel like, hey, I want to study more. And why not um, by studying more, I can earn a, a, a degree on that. So I, I enrolled myself uh, for the program and uh, IR and TS is also based on self-satisfaction because and IR, of course, uh, it brings me another step higher because what I did in my job last time, I, I approved drawings. So if we don't have titles, uh, you don't have IR, but you approve drawing. It, it doesn't look so good. So for me, it's not, it's not uh, what do you say, uh, convincing. It's not really convincing. You approve drawing, but you, you yourself doesn't have a title. So it doesn't look so good. And I feel like, hey, I need to, 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 to have something. So I applied and I worked for it. And of course, uh, like I said, JEK I did because it was uh, compulsory uh, at that time because whoever has earned an IR title are compulsory to attend the JEK course in uh, ILSAS. It, at that time, I think it's worth 25,000 each. So we attended, so I attended just, you know, like to fulfill the requirement. But uh, TS is uh, again, it's self-satisfaction. I feel like uh, it's time for me, uh, it's always time for me to give back. So when I have TS, I'm more exposed to the committee. So MBOT always have all these programs. Like uh, last time when I joined IEM, uh, they asked me to do this presentation for the young engineers uh, via online, via face-to-face. -face. So I feel like I'm more um, uh, available for the people out there. So if I don't join all these committees, maybe I'm not even here tonight with you, Iman. So these are the reason why lah. So not, not, not kata there's a requirement for the uh, promotion, what not. I don't think so. For me, no lah. Mm. Thank you so much. Uh, that really speaks so many levels, Dr. Iriani. Because uh, from your passion to learn, you've gotten so far. And yet at the same time, you're able to give to the community with that passion. All right, uh, so we have one more question from uh, FD. What is the one key attitude that you carry from school until now? The one what? One, one key, key attitude. 
a uh, positive thinking. So I'm always uh, I look at things positively. You know, uh, okay, there's another story. Why I did my PhD? <laughs> I have so many stories. Oh, so, uh, why I did my PhD? Uh, it was somewhere in 2012. Uh, I have this guy. Uh, he's higher than me. He's higher ranking than me. But uh, he used to tell us that um, he's a UK grad. But uh, I remember he told us that I don't respect local grad. So I remember that word until today. He told me that I don't respect local grad. So I was like, why? And that UTM is such a very good university. And of course, it was economic crisis. So we didn't get to fly, right? So he said, I didn't respect local grad. That's number one. And then he said, uh, you tak da apa-apa. You only have a degree. I have master's, he said. So I was... Like, uh, I was shocked with that statement. So I feel like I need to prove to him something. So what I did at that time in 20, before 2012, I registered for IR. Because he said I got nothing, I just got a degree. I registered for IR and then in 2013, I registered for PhD. And also, uh, I did several other things. And uh, finally, I got my PhD and I got two IRs. I got a uh, double PE. And uh, I feel so great. It's like the sweetest revenge, something like that. So uh, what I meant here is that when people say bad things to you, you take it as the um, uh, fuel to actually burn them back. <laughs> so um, for me, it's the sweetest revenge. And um, I feel like, I feel thankful that he, he said all those things to me last time that I don't respect local grad whatsoever because it actually intrigued me or, or, or uh, keep me uh, moving forward. And uh, I, I feel grateful for that. So these are my, my key, you know, um, uh, what... I've always bring throughout my life. So whenever people say bad things about me, I'm going to see it as a challenge. So, yeah. Wonderful. That is very, very <laughs> uh, formidable, you could say. Because, much, um, honestly, people like that are so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> they okay. always have something to say. <laughs> but, but it's wonderful that you take it in such a positive light and challenge yourself. And I think this is something that everyone should learn from. Uh, okay, so we have, I think, a general question from Shafiq. Uh, what is your career right now and what are you doing right now? Is, it, is there something besides <laughs> like what we uh, put in the poster? I mean, like, if you could share. Uh, I, maybe he wants something more. Yeah. I don't know where he's going with this, this question right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'm doing a few other things. Uh, for example, uh, I'm writing ebooks right now. And uh, okay, uh, I didn't go to that slide study. Uh, I'm writing ebooks actually. Uh, I'm an ebook writer and a blog writer. And of course, uh, I don't know if I should share this. Um, uh, I want, I'm, I'm aspired to become a full time trader. <laughs> <laughs> if that's oh. the question, if that's the 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 answer that he wants, so uh, I I learned uh, how to trade quite quite recently and uh, mostly on American market like American stocks, and uh, it, it becomes my my latest passion and I really love uh, learning. What happened is that Iman, what what's very interesting about being a trader is that it's all about charts and graphs. And my work last time is all about charts and graph. And sometimes I, I, I see similar, uh, 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 what do you say, formula, for example, like a standard deviation, all these things. I've been doing standard deviation all my life. In fact, in fact my PhD also on standard deviation. So it, it triggers me all these things. It's like it's connecting to each other. Even though uh, uh, trading is like, something that is very alien to me. I never learn about it anywhere close. So uh, by, 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 by getting involved in this thing, it, it, it intrigues me, it triggers me that, hey, it, it couldn't be that different anyway. So of course, if you ask me what are my, my other passion, uh, instead of writing books, um, you can find me on this um, blog, blog or the, um, I'm a blogger. 
and uh, my LinkedIn, I'm always sharing uh, some quotes and all these things. And I was recently named as the uh, 70 Rising Personalities by Marketing in Asia. And this is my ebook store. And of course, uh, my new passion uh, doing stock markets. This is uh, one of the things that I, I really love doing. Lah. So I hope that answers your question. So, you know, like being electrical engineer, it doesn't stop you from being anything else or anyone else. You are so open to do anything that you want or you like. So it's okay. For me, just follow the flow. And if you really love what you're doing, just continue uh, to do it. <laughs> Thank you. That is very nice. That is very nice. Uh, okay, so for anyone who is interested in Dr. Irani's books, uh, please do look for them. Lightning Myth, Gadis Electric, and also Temuduga Copy. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have, I think this will be the last question uh, because we've already exceeded uh, 10 minutes from the time. But to make up for the connection problem, uh, okay, so from Shafiq, what I mean is, did you, oh, are you still in TNB, uh, which department and position? I think, I think Shafiq, uh, all you need to do is just go ahead to our poster. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just, just go ahead to our poster. Okay, uh, right. I'm still with Tanaga. I'm still with Tanaga, but I'm currently on, uh, on leave because, um, I'm about to leave the country, to be honest. Um, I'm about to go on with my next journey. We are migrating to another country. So let's just uh, keep following me on my LinkedIn or my blog. So you'll, you will know what will happen to me next. Uh, happy following. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm still with Tanaga. I, I, didn't res I, did, I didn't leave Tanaga. It's always in my heart. Lah. But uh, I'm on leave. I'm on leave, yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Shafi, for the question. Uh, okay, so I think uh, there are a few more slides that you would like to show uh, as we'll be ending the Q&A session now. Okay, uh, this is my last slide uh, on the career tips because uh, I know when you guys come into this uh, session that uh, you might want to know what are the tips or the uh, what 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 I do believe uh, when I uh, um apa tu? Uh, my entire journey. So it's my nineteenth year this year uh, since I joined Tanaga. So what are the uh, uh, tips that I always believe in. Number one is always never, ever, ever stop learning. There's always new opportunity ahead of you that needs to be discovered. You know, I somehow prepared this slide many, many months ago. I'm recycling it and I'm so surprised that I wrote this many months ago because uh, when I say never stop learning, so I told you that I'm now learning about the stock market. So this is one of those opportunities that needs to be discovered by me at least. So I don't know in many years ahead of time, what else could it be? Maybe I can become a baker, whatever, I don't know. So as for now, do not stop learning because the world is so great, you know, and plan ahead. Not having a plan is the worst planning of all because uh, some people, they just bulldoze whatever they do, like just follow whatever people say. So for me, even though I, I never stop learning, I do have my plan. I do plan my, my, okay, you know, about this migrating thing. Uh, many years ago, I just found my one of my diaries. I actually wrote a timeline for myself. I wrote at the age of, okay, 40, fine, I'm 40s. At the age of 40, I want to migrate. I wrote that many, many years ago. And of course, uh, I didn't work towards it like in serious matter, but somehow it came. It just came. So, I mean, even though if you're, you don't have a plan, you still need to have a plan. Okay, so at least five years, for example. And uh, get a mentor uh, who can guide you throughout the journey. I do have my mentor. And um, uh, in 
each and every area uh, that I, I, I was involved with, for example, um, I do have my mentor. For example, when I write ebooks, I do have my mentor. In my trading uh, uh, cycle, so I do have my mentor and I know you are listening. My hello mentor. <laughs> and um, I always have my mentor uh, with me uh, in whatever um, uh, two area that I am involved with. Uh, and last but not least, be visible. Okay, what, why am I saying this be visible? Um, nobody can see you if you don't show yourself. And that's the difference between be visible and unnecessary bragging or something like that. Because people want to see you um, and they want to see proof. Most of the time they want to see proof. Some people, they just, you know, brag and talk. But that's orang kata kita cakap apa atom kosong eh <laughs> so something like that so for example when i show all the um the website that i am involved say like linkedin for example i just want to be visible because in linkedin i'm sharing my i'm sharing quotes for example and also about this um seminar or webinar and if you don't show it how are people going to know that you're going to present tonight so these are the things that you need to be visible and of course uh, for my case i want to do sharing as much as i can because when i do sharing i feel very happy and i hope that people will uh, benefit from uh, my sharing for example uh you you saw my ebook just now i wrote about the 10 tips of um apa tu uh, grad graduasi on time kan so these are the 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 sharing that i wrote when i did my phd for three years because many people been asking uh, how did you do it i uh, you do it part time and i had very i have very small kids that time my youngest was two years old my eldest was about to to apa tu sit for upsr and my second one he was like darja berapa i can't remember and my husband was working in Sarawak at that time. So I was alone raising them. And uh, it was a very tough journey for me. The three, the three toughest years uh, doing my PhD. So many people have been asking me, how did you do it? And I wrote everything in this book, mostly everything I wrote in this, including my, my uh, Italy uh, journey when I was sent to University of Bologna. Uh, when I was in Bologna, I was like, I almost gave up many times. I said, that's it for me. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go back and I, want, I was giving up. So what makes me not giving up? during that time because studying abroad alone is a very highly stressful and plus you're doing phd if degree i think not so bad because you have so many friends around you like when you're doing phd you are all alone so when i was there uh, the the supervisors like i have professor uh, alberto nurti uh, bolon uh, professor there are a few of them and they are like you know the italians they don't really you know like we in malaysia we are very helpful so in italy they are really like do your own thing so i was so stressful at that time and i feel like i feel so dumb and stupid because i feel i know nothing when i went to the lab i don't know what i was doing so i was giving up and those are the thing that it, it keeps me going and i do have my mentor at that time and uh, my colleague, my professor, uh, his name is Prof Zainal. He actually keeps me going. He said that this is temporary. So you just need to go through a little bit more. And then he keeps inspiring me and telling me that don't stop. Because at that time, I, I got sponsored from Yasan Kazana. If I don't finish my uh, study, then I'm going to have to pay them back. And it's a big some amount of money which I, I don't want to to spend my my money to to pay them back so i keep doing it and uh yeah finally i completed in three years which i'm really happy about so yeah that's my journey <laughs> thank you so much dr iriani uh yeah. honestly i've i think there's a quote uh behind uh these kinds of hardships like 
mm-hmm. when people are just about to give up, they're actually very near to success, right? Yeah, yeah, there is. There. Yeah, I, I do believe in that. I do believe in that. That, that is the reason why you need to have your mentor or your support team. My support team was amazing. I have a twin sister. She's uh, uh, She's got the same face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my twin sister, I hope she's listening. Um, she's my biggest strength. Uh, of course, my mother and my father, they are my fuel. They fired me up throughout my journey. And of course, my twin sister and my siblings, uh, they are all my biggest supporter when I was at the deepest, uh, what do you say? Mm, when I was rock bottom, they are the one who lift me up. So I don't know if uh, the listeners here, I mean the audience, if you don't have your support system, please at least find one because you need them. You can't actually uh, do all of this alone, including degree, definitely. I'm so lucky that I have a twin sister. Uh, whenever I'm down or I'm the top side, she's always with me. So, um, yeah, for me, I'm lucky I don't have to find a best friend because I already have one since birth. So, if you don't have, please uh, find one. You're going to need them. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I think uh, we've already reached our end for tonight. So thank you so much, Dr. Iryani, for being our special guest for this topic of electrical engineering. Uh, it was very much not only about electrical engineering, but also such a passionate speech coming from you, a sharing. And also um, thank you to the audience who have been with us. Uh, in Zoom and also from FD Live. And also thank you very much for the questions. Uh, it's very interesting and very uh, interactive when you're able to join us. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to say good night. Thank you. Thank you, Cikgu Aisha. Cikgu Aisha, we start all the way. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Cikgu. <laughs>